understand well. So you tell the Lord, teach me. I have come for a seminar. I have come for knowledge. I have come for information. I have come to receive instruction. Teach me that I may understand. Open your mouth therefore and talk to the Lord. Oh, 
There is no beside thee, beside thee, neither is thou in the wrong life. As a God, there is none who leads as holy as a God. None is beside thee, beside thee. magnificence we exalt you in the beauty of holiness we join the hosts of heaven to say you are worthy worthy of our praise worthy of all worship we therefore say take glory over us take glory over everything that pertains to us be thou Lord indeed in our circumstances. Rule and reign that your will might be done in the lives of all these precious youths, men and women that are present this day. 
let that which you have designed for them be their portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Let nothing abort the course you have chosen for them. Let nothing prevent the blessing that you have designed from them from reaching unto them in the name of Jesus Christ. As your word is revealed this morning, come afternoon, blessed Father. Enlighten, illuminate, strengthen, empower them that they may do what you will that they should do. In the name of Jesus Christ. If any has taken a wrong path, Lord, let that person be redirected, be corrected, and be put into that your perfect path. In the name of Jesus Christ. For anybody or for those people that over the years, Lord, they have not known what to do. They seem to be in a doldrum, not knowing their left from their right. Let the light shine and let them receive direction today. Let your spirit minister directly to them and assist them to take the right steps in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who have been waiting and wondering, let grace, let illumination come that will make them be where they should be to receive what they should receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious master, all sufficient redeemer, the redeemer kinsman who thinks good of us, who desires that we prosper and be in health all around our lives. Have your way. Teacher of teachers, have your way. Educate your people to the glory of God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for answering our prayers. As we have prayed in Jesus' name. And amen. Now sit down, please. Today is the first day of October. And Nigeria is celebrating her independence anniversary. Today being the 55th year of her freedom from the colonial masters. And God has chosen that today will be the day that we will bring again to the singles in the congregations the message of marriage. The last time, it was about four or five years ago. And ever since, we have not had the opportunity until the Lord gave this one. And I'm believing that by the time we have finished, the Lord will have spoken and given directions and instructions to many to assist them in this honorable step that God will have them take in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When we look around us, when we look at the society, we read the papers, listen to the news, we all conclude without doubt that there is really no time for the church. If you know what has been predicted, which have been written, the things Jesus himself declared as signs preceding his second advent. His second advent proper will be his physical, literal manifestation at Jerusalem to rule this world. But before that physical, literal manifestation will be the invisible manifestation in the cloud in which he will take away the church. The church that is majorly made up of Gentiles men of other nations outside Israel, nation Israel. That is what constitutes majority of the church. In fact, those who came from Israel as a nation constitute less than one in a million of people that talk about Jesus Christ. So, Jesus physically will come to redeem the Israel. But before that redemption who has been the redemption of the body of Christ, the church. So if Jesus told us of events that will be manifesting prior to his physical advent, then we should know that those events, if they are manifesting, the church should be much more comfortable since 
their departure will precede the, the, the manifestation of Jesus Christ literally at Jerusalem. So when we see the thing Jesus said happening in our own dispensation, the church should know that any moment from now, Jesus will call them up. If somebody is conscious of that rapture, then the person wants to pay attention to marriage. Marriage can interfere with your salvation. The Bible tells us that all unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness. Righteousness is all about doing what is right in the sight of God. What God will have you do. If you are not doing that, or if you are doing what is not right in the sight of God, that is unrighteousness. So if you follow marriage in a way that is not right in the sight of God, it's unrighteousness. And that unrighteousness is sin. That sin will interfere with your salvation. So if we're talking about marriage, everybody is required to pay attention so that you don't get into unrighteousness that can prevent you from going in the event of the rapture. Today, I will talk on three points or three messages. First one is Satan's apples are spurious and sour. Are spurious and S P U R I spurious and sour. We give you ten minutes to write questions that you have, you want to write, and then we take the last two messages together. And the themes are signing in for the sacred yoke, signing in for the sacred yoke, and then settling down for the substance signing in for the sacred yoke signing in enrolling for the sacred yoke and then settling down for stance we are going to take them together first first message satan's apples are spurious and sour is a message designed to warn to warn the simple to warn the unwary to warn the person that takes things for granted to warn the person that comes to church but doesn't learn doesn't listen to warn the person that is insincere who comes and refuses to have a change of mind, who maintains his or her old beliefs, ideologies of life that contradict or conflict with what God's word dictates. To warn the person that says, I want to be in heaven at last. Satan's apples are spurious and sour. Something is spurious if that thing does not, is not what it appears to be. Appears to be what it is not. Spurious. It may look like that thing, but when you come close, you discover that it is not what you thought it was. What it was presenting is not what it really is. Spurious. You look at something, it looks very attractive, very nice. But when you come very close, very, very close, you will find that the thing that looks enticing, looks attractive, is more of a destroyer. Something that hurts, something that causes pain, something that rather destroys instead of making life better more pleasant. Satan's apples are spurious and let's go to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 13. 
A serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall he touch it, lest he die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Your eyes be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that it was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave unto, unto her husband with her, and he did it. And the eyes of them both were opened. And when they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid them of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, we are thou. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? We are of, I commanded thee that thou dost not eat. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. A couple living happily, enjoying the glory of God's presence. No trouble of any kind. No sorrow of any kind. No condemnation of any kind. Being completely at liberty to enjoy the very place God had put them into. Until Satan, using the agency of the serpent, came to the woman, spoke to the woman, convinced the woman and affected the woman until she complied to his suggestion. Then she brought in her husband and both of them completed the feat of disobedience and they entered a state of regret, a state of fear. It was in that state of shame that the voice that love, extra lovely voice of God, that voice that used to excite became intimidating, became a voice of intimidation, a voice of confrontation, a voice of condemnation. They never bargained for what they got. Things that the devils offer, suggestions, advice, compulsions that come from Satan. If you yield to them, you will see at the end that they were not what you thought. They are not what you thought they were. And that they caused bitterness. They caused sorrow. They are sour. Proverbs chapter 14 Verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Chapter 16. Verse 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. 
way that looks okay for the man. God had given an instruction. Satan came and countered the instruction. And the woman began to see in Satan's perspective. And that way looked right to her. That way looked better for her. Not knowing that death was awaiting her and, his, and her husband at the end of the journey. There is a way that looks okay. But that way is a way of death. Death becomes the terminus of that way. Therefore, everybody that is not yet married needs to pay attention. As we once again talk about marriage. Talk about what is required. What God expects of you. Please don't allow what some other person has told you. Some other pastor who hasn't got God's drilling. Who hasn't been exposed to the ways of God. Who doesn't know that God is to be feared. God is not to be joked with. There are people that only see God as that very soft, benevolent being that wants to give you everything that you want. But when God takes you to his inner room, he tells you who he is, that he is to be feared. For those that he visits at the parlor, as it were, they only know about this one and that one that is okay. But when God takes you deeper, he makes you know that he is to be feared. And when God makes a minister know that he is to be feared, he will let the congregation that he is pastoring know the same. If somebody hasn't known the other side of God, he will only tell the congregation about the love of God in the light of the goodies that emanate from God. The person will tell them about the judgment, negative experiences that God unleashes to the rebellious. Watchman is a place of truth. It makes us know that he is to be feared. Why he loves you, does you good, you have to accord him honor and fear and do the things that he expects of you. Satan knows this thing I'm telling you. He knows that God is to be feared. And his business is to prevent people from knowing it. So that they may experience that side of God that is not good to mankind, to the to, to disobedience. The kind where punishment is unleashed to the rebellious. Came the old serpent. Having great knowledge of the blessing of God, he has been with God. He has dwelt in God's presence. He knows principles of God. Having that knowledge, he came to the creatures that God made in his image. That were enjoying the things he had lost. The glory of God, the presence of God. Creatures that were enjoying it, the man, Adam, male and female, they were. He came to use his knowledge against their ignorance. And they fell woefully to his wit. And he knocked them out. That Satan has been on this earth since that time. Acquiring knowledge. He already had knowledge. But he didn't know about human beings. He needed to interact with human beings to know what they are made of. From the time Adam and Eve fell in the garden, he has been acquiring knowledge from human beings. He has a big data. What man is made of. What man is inclined to doing. That information he has acquired, the knowledge he has acquired from experience with man, to use it against sons of men. But God knows how disadvantaged mankind is and comes 
to attend to his people so that Satan's wit is not what it should be towards mankind. That means Satan's wit futile. He comes, God comes to stand for and with us so that those knowledge that Satan acquired and the knowledge he had prior to mankind being uh, formed that stand by us to make all that knowledge to be vain by giving us information us what we should do and staying by us to assist us to do what we should do and this gathering is one of such avenues of equipping you to render Satan's superb wisdom futile. One of Satan's major modes of operation is through seduction. One of the principal ways Satan uses to undo, uses to knock down mankind, human beings, is to seduce them, to deceive them, to utilize stimulation to deceive. You summon and stir up the senses, sense of sight. Use something to dazzle it. With the dazzling, the person is captivated and next thing, forth like a pack of cards. The sense of feeling. And through that stimulus of the person's sense of feeling, the person is overwhelmed and then the person falls like a pack of cards. Gives information and then the thing it seems enticing. Looks so good. By so doing, the person is deceived. And the person goes to do that thing that God does to be done. The person falls out of favor with God. The oppression of deception seduction seducing you with the eyes what you see through the eyes through what you hear through how you feel making things to glitter but we know that it is not all that glitters that is gold many people are suffering today in marriage because they followed the dictates of the flesh they follow the pressure, the impulsion of the flesh, their carnal senses. They didn't follow the way of the Lord. Many in church, I'm not talking about outside the church now, in church are suffering because they followed what their flesh tells them or told them. Some will say, Pastor, before I married her, I didn't have any, any interest. Though. She wasn't so beautiful. So I wanted to do God's will. How come that I didn't do, how come that I have this kind of problem? This kind of thing happening. And then when you interview, interview the person, you find that the person did not follow the precepts laid down. Did not follow the regulations put down. The person went into marriage because parents put pressure on him or on her. Because friends laughed at him or her. Because somebody recommended for him. Somebody said, why don't you try that person? Went into marriage because he felt pity or she felt pity for that person and accepted. Or felt that he or she was getting too old. Anything I see, I grab. And based on that, went into marriage and then saw something that she never or he never bargained for in life. If you walk according to your human senses, I'm talking to children of God. I'm not preaching to unbelievers. I'm going to go further later on. Because if one doesn't know his or her kingdom, the rules, regulations, then that person will be following the rules of some other kingdom. 
the kingdom of the dead and will suffer in the kingdom of light. You belong to a kingdom and there are rules in that kingdom. If you don't follow the rules of that kingdom to get into marriage and you follow the rules or the ways of the other kingdom, you will crash in this kingdom where you belong to really. So many are suffering because they followed their flesh. They got into a and through ungodly or improper means. And I want to take a little time to tell you some things that if you see man, please, please, just take a little break. Don't continue in that process. If you find the things I want to mention now happening to you in the course of wanting to get married, in the process of getting married, take a break. Like somebody who says, I am going on recess. Let me calm down. If you find, because these are all manifestations of the flesh. If you find yourself getting impatient, impatient, you will become irritated, become nervous, become unhappy, become jittery, become restless in the program. And you begin to complain that they are delaying me. This, why, is she not, why is she not praying? Or why are they not coming? Well, that, tell yourself, okay, it's time to cool down. Tell Once you find patience manifesting, impatience in marriage, you have applied for, or you have not applied for, but you are wanting to do something, but nothing seems to be coming. Once you say, say this thing, Come. Stop. Stop. So that your mind can calm down. You don't pursue marriage with impatience. If you find insubordination, an attitude of not respecting of authority coming into your life, you begin to speak against marriage committee, against your pastor, the person that you share the testimony with to see what uh, he could advise you before you take the next step. And then he's telling you, I'm praying with you, bro. Sister, I'm still praying. And you become irritated. You become unhappy. You say, why is he not giving me an answer? I'm going to leave this thing behind. Once you see yourself now manifesting an attitude of regarding the person you used to regard, flesh has come in. Hold on. Once a couple of short time, not too long ago, a brother applied for a sister that was underage and was waiting patiently, as it were, and the matter was brought to my table. We checked the age difference. The age difference was much. So, if there's much age difference, we have to be doubly sure that it is God's leading. We have to be doubly sure so that one doesn't get married to a young woman who will become miserable all her life. Who may even backslide while in marriage. That is why once the age difference is much, we want to be doubly sure. Especially if the sister is still on the young side. If she is still on the very young side. Knowing the developments that take place in a growing woman. So in the process of informing the brother to go and pray again, one of the days... I think he must have charged himself that day that if he comes and they didn't say what he was expecting, that he's going to call it bluff. And then that day, he looked very quiet and he came in. And by the time the Dacian pastor spoke to him, 
and told him that he had made mistakes in the way he showed rudeness and all that. And didn't even conclude the punishment that he should serve for his attitude. The young man busted out and told the assigned pastor, I have not come to hear what you have told me now. I want something different from what you have told me. And if somebody manifests that attitude, it now tells you what he will do if he gets married to a tender sister. He is going to be a boss, not a husband. He's going to be an oppressor who wouldn't give her room to talk. Who wouldn't want her to say anything after he has said something. So the same pastor is a little experienced in these things. He has had bigger insults than that one. So he allowed the committee that were around, the people in the committee, told them to take over. He walked away to go and do some other things. Knowing that that person is not qualified to marry that tender person that he is applying for. That whatever is pushing him is of the flesh. And Satan, listen brothers, Satan can give you a vision that looks real. And the proof of who gave you the vision is the attitude that will follow with that vision that you have. If you find in subordination the flesh has come, it is not God that is propelling you. If you find impatience, pray, pray now. If the prayer, if the person being awaited doesn't give an answer in two weeks, in three weeks, in four weeks, I will throw it away. It is not God. If God gives you a direction, if it is God, he will give you the patience to wait. He will give you the listening ears. Listening ears to hear what your senior pastors. Marriage committee is made up of senior pastors. Or your own pastor, but a pastor in you. Talking to you and telling you of the need for you to look well. You will hear it well. If you don't hear the committee, you don't hear your pastor, flesh is ruling. So if you see insubordination appearing in your life, if you see rebellion, I will leave this church. Uh -uh. It's what friend, the only church. If you in the name of Jesus. You see that rebellion. You leave the church, leave this place, go out and marry. The flesh is on the prowl. Satan is behind that activity. If you find the infatuation, infatuation, the one in which lost in, the person is lost in, lost in, and is ready to do wrong in order to get that person, he or she is pursuing infatuation. Any advice given? Ah, that one thing you are saying, you are saying to yourself. It is falling on deaf ears. People that say, once I saw her, something happened in my heart. The love became extraordinary. I cannot control myself again. Infatuation. Loving somebody, loving quote, and you don't have self-control again. Once you close your eyes, you are seeing that person. You open your eyes of that person. You dream today, it is that person. Tomorrow, that person. Every day, he is having some interaction with that person. And you have become overwhelmed. You have become conquered by that individual in your heart. If that person says, let's leave the church. Leave them that belong. Let's, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. You say, Jerry, leave them. Let's go our way. Infatuation. Infatuation. Extravagant passion or admiration. Extravagant. Such that God's rules are put secondary to God's, to, to that affection that the person is having for that party. Infatuation. Once you see it happening to you, you need to cry out to God for deliverance. That is what pushes the man. 
to go to her and her consent. If she says, I will agree, then he now goes to the marriage committee to drop his application. That what makes him to go to the parents. I want to know the parents and let the parents know him before even anything begins. Infatuation. Once you see it, all the people that are scheduled to travel that are here, stand up. And then you don't mind if this. I'm not going to come walk and walk with him. You don't mind. Since he will marry you. I will tell the devil. You see that happen in your life. No more fear of God. What of if while I am lusting after this person, the rapture takes place? What will happen to me? No more thought of that. It is now. Let me grab him. Whatever it takes. Thank you, G. Where I was. Your ways are never the ways. I once told this to some people, I think in the recent time. If my sister was so called sister, one that was so overwhelmed with affection put inside for a brother. And then she connived with the After that the Lord had created man and brother. formed him from the, the elder top. brother Which wasn't a watchman. He doesn't want his brother to continue the watchman. They are from the same what area the in the east. She connived Praise with that elder brother. To but arrange a meeting between her the giver of the and new wine the, so comes. our own brother, the younger one, in his house. Let her seduce You have him. come to drink. And, and she from succeeded. morning, you started drinking. The elder brother invited the young man. The last lap of the wine. And kept him in his house. Praise the God. young man didn't know that that lady was in that house. Tim T. And you know. Late, that he couldn't <laughs> come to where he lived. Hallelujah. The elder brother not told him yeah. he was living alone. It wasn't married. Yeah. He had three bedroom apartment. That room sleep in that room this night. And the young Men man and brethren. Was his elder brother that today is uh, the last day of the him. feast. And then as he entered the room. Behold, and there is the something so that Jesus talks about the last day of the feast. He was surprised. But That's the day he said whoever is testing, let him come and the drink. The devil's devices that we are on So ground. today. And they discuss you have come and to all drink. that before you need. And from morning, mm -hmm. you started drinking. And the young man, that the time there was no lap uh, mobile of the wine. The young man Praise God. slept with the woman, and the woman brought him down. And you know, and said, you must now marry me. But that the young is man when was so sorrowful that he has destroyed his testimony and said, I will never marry you. The wine he said, if tends you to marry become me, then sour. I will report. Say, go and report. She came out of the Lord. And if somebody and reports, come back safely. we'll investigate it. And as you are coming back, when the young man was back with testimonies. He denied. It never happened. The young it man was an interpreter. Sealed. Who used to interpret side by side in the name the of pastor. Jesus Christ. Can I hear he a, denied a, it. a greater amen? After a while, Pastor said, "Okay, Hallelujah. I will get to the yeah. it or not. You yeah. said it happened. You said never. Now, if it did not Men happen, and brethren, if it did not happen, today is the last day of the man, feast. Let God's blessings follow you. But if it and happened, there is something that Jesus and talks about the last that day of it didn't happen. No, that That's today the day he said, whoever you have is been tested, let him come and drink. from the church. So let today." It. After you have come a to drink time. And the from morning you started drinking. Left the watchman. The and last the church. lap of the wine. That lady was disciplined. And Praise what happened God. again. And within a short time, nobody saw her in church again. And you know After about five years. That when the feast is that ended, young man looking for pastor. After To inform you what happened. And the young man narrated what happened. And what had happened to him following his denial. Following the disciplinary measure given to him as it were in absentia. It was told him, if you told lies, you have been sent out of the church. And he left the church. And the Lord God of heaven to pursue him. He said, time there was worship. And he began to worship with other people in the church. Any time that he comes to a point of wanting to now flow in that worship, 
it will seem as if he was pushed down and he will crash for, for about five years and he couldn't bear it again. And he said, any punishment, please give me, let me have peace. The lady, nobody knew what happened. Why did I bring that story? It was a woman that plunged him into that abyss. Infatuation. Pushing you to do what common sense should tell you is stupid. If you find dishonesty and craftiness, you want to tell lies. Tell lies about the process. Once you find that, hold on. Don't continue. You're being crafty to committee, being crafty to those who are supervising you. In that matter of marriage, if you find in your heart worldliness, that means wanting to follow the pattern of the world. If you find that as you are planning this marriage, all that is in your heart is to do it as the people of the world. Those people that will come to the committee and say they want Sunday fellowship, they want Sunday blessing. They want Sunday blessing. But the reason for Sunday blessing is so that they could be alone, put their music, seeing that there will be no supervision, and then let people dance and do what the people in the world do. If that is what is in your mind, that kind of thing, let me dress in white and white, the way the world does things. If you find that you hold on, this is in your own interest. In your own interest. Hold on. Say to yourself, self, stop. I mustn't enter this honorable institution with anything that doesn't give God glory. If you find yourself getting into immorality, submit to sin. Because of that individual you want to marry, two of you or you and some other person, please don't continue without settling that matter. If you read or if you listen to our previous teachings, we took time to tell you about the root of a thing. If the root is holy, then with the fruit, the product, and the, everything outside, up, upstairs, holy. But if it is defiled, if it is defiled, what will comfort will not be holy, will be defiled. If you knew your partner, either before you began the program, two of you have come to church, and you went into the scene, and then applied for marriage, you have defiled the roots. That marriage will not work. It will be a miserable marriage. If you have begun, then fell into sin, and you covered it, you have defiled the roots. That marriage is not going to be a smooth one. It's going to be filled with pitfalls. Big, big gullies that will make life very miserable. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Often a time, when the things begin to happen, the person will insist not to open up. We hold on until the thing breaks through and hide it too long. You can't that thing going on secret for too long a time. It will always come out. And by the time it comes out, the chastisement the person will be given will be more serious than the one he should have been given had he, he was given or was given had he reported or she reported. Today, the first book is there. Spirit of God ministered to me and it was like Facebook fellowship. Marrying through Facebook fellowship. People don't pray again. Facebook fellowship. They begin to chat. And then from chatting, 
then application follows. Facebook fellowship, very dangerous and deadly. Facebook fellowship will always lead to the flesh, fleshly activities. Nobody will take a picture of herself when she looks ugly. If you, if you look ugly, you wipe it out. You need to put your face in such a way that it will look charming. And then when it looks exactly charming, then you post it. True or false? You won't post the one that makes you look ugly. So, on seeing your beauty, the brother has seen the beauty. He said, brother so and so likes this. That is his reply. Then chatting, begins to read and read the Facebook. Next thing, he has become seduced. And then he applies. Oh, on the other side, the brother will also begin to show himself looking very smart. Take those pictures where he looks like a Bobo nice, you know? Bobo. He will show a picture where he looks very bad. Even if he's saying, if he's a, a, a that, uh, wants to make a self, he does it and it will become more interesting than what he was even saying. That is what the Facebook shows. Marriage through Facebook is fleshly marriage. Flesh. Flesh. When you go with the flesh, you will crash. Somebody may now ask, does it mean that God can never lead somebody, even through Facebook? Does it mean that it cannot happen? It can happen, but one in a million. And it may, that one in a million may not be your own. One in a million. It may happen, but it may not be that your own. We show you rules of the Lord. So that if you want, if you have chosen to follow the one that is very difficult, very rare, then you are taking a terrible risk for your salvation and for your existence on this earth. Nobody should toy with his or her salvation. A brother was held down by the marriage committee for about five years or so because the person he said he was being led to was underage. He said, I'm going to wait. Now, when she entered the age, 21 and above, he applied. Things that were happening, he refused to see the warning signs of God. I'm not talking about what I read in a novel. I'm talking about what happened in the watchman. He refused to see the signs. Well, marriage committee is made up of people that are humans. If they tell you, bro, we won't, we won't, we won't. And you say, I am led, I am led. And they do. And you begin to quarrel. And you do this. They say, okay, let's leave him. She's up to age. She is no longer a kid. And for about four years or so, they went, it went through courtship, with troubles and troubles, and the brother refused to hear the counsel. If God is leading you, you will listen to the counsel of elders. And then he went into the marriage. Last year that it happened, or even this year, in Watchman, after marriage, the lady told him that we are not going to have marital benevolence until 2016. That was 2014. Or last year. No marital benevolence until 2016. Two years time. And the brother thought it was a joke. <laughs> this, my, this is my funny wife. This is my funny wife. Why are you pulling my legs or my feet? Next day, she said, I mean what I said yesterday. 
after one week, I am standing where I am standing. After one month, the brother. That same pastor invited his sister. And you could see somebody that was not converted. If she was ever born again, it must have been long ago. You could see an attitude of somebody. But brother, what happened that you stayed so long upon everything? He said, what could he say? The lady has left the watchman. She is not in the watchman now. And the brother is alone. Not a single day of knowledge of the person he married. Do you blame anybody? No, you blame him. If God is leading you, you listen to the voice of elders in the church. Spiritual people. If they are saying, brother, listen, you won't be, I must wait. Don't mind. I, I can do it. I can take it. You won't say that. If the love you have is God's own love, if it is not infatuation, Let nobody become a proverb after all this teaching to be used as an illustration to warn other people. Don't allow Facebook fellowship to ruin you. And is supervising the Facebook. So, uses the term um, making friend. Yeah, my Facebook friend. Making relationship or friendship relationship to begin to be so casual. So casual. So the thing that looked seen before that has some tint of sin to make it look what is alright. So that people can be involved in immorality. James chapter 4 and verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Don't you know that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Don't you know that Becoming interested and choosing the way of the world, showing affection, likeness for the way of the world. Don't you know that it is enmity with God? The word enmity there means hostility. Enmity means hostility, being hostile to God. The world. The Greek word is cosmos. It has to do with the pattern, fashion, the politics, the principles, the way, the properties, the substance you see physically in the world. All of them are all encompassed in that word cosmos. Don't you know that friendship of those things is hostility with God? If you begin to follow the way the people of the world do their things, that is cosmos. That is of the world. The pattern of their doing all their things, their fashion, their dressing, dress code, how they dress in wedding is inclusive. What they accept as the norm. If you follow that, then you are being hostile to God. First of the world. If you want to use the Facebook to make the choice for a life partner, then you are loving the world. You are going, you have love for the world and you are being hostile to God. No person must take this scripture lightly. If you are hostile to God, God is going to hostile to you. He says he will show himself merciful to the people that are merciful. And by extension, 
hostile to those that are hostile. Infatuation makes for all this. Worldliness makes for all this. Immorality is a reflection or an expression of terrible degeneration. Don't forget the man called Samson, mighty. In those days we were young, he, we called him Samson the Strong. Known for power, doing things that were superlative, great supernatural manifestations. But it was infatuation that rendered him blind. Delilah, ah, get her for me, for she pleased me. And parents didn't have option than to do what he be he be them, and then his eyes were ultimately removed. Infatuation blinds the eyes. But Sheba charmed was him, and David was overwhelmed by her beauty, and was carried away, and lost his peace, and got a dent to his image. Never accept any. Unlawful arrangement. Sister, anybody that comes to you directly from the watchman without following the lay down rules in the watchman, please don't welcome the person. Even if in your heart you will wish that he married you, don't welcome that person. Because that person will turn to be the individual you never thought he was. If the person came from another church, there are churches that don't have rules. The rules place to, uh, to make for orderliness and sanctity, they don't have it. Whereby a brother can go to a sister and say, I want to marry you. Well, if he came from such a church, Simply refer him to the marriage committee. He can be excused that he didn't know. But let it be known to the committee that he had met you. His own may be genuine because he lacks knowledge. But you have to pray well in a church where there is no such administrative setup to help the people. If you go there, what kind of truth will they have? So you need to really pray in such a case. But that person is excusable. That individual from under church can be excused. But if it's a person from the watchman, please cry foul without delay. Refer the person of God to a marriage committee and inform your pastor before you are invited. It is not the committee you should inform. Inform your pastor that so and so a person approached you and look at what the person said. To save your head. Even though, listen again, that you want that person, if, he, if God is the one leading him, to be a husband. But do that to save your conscience, save your head, and save your life. If you don't, that thing you covered will play out when two of you live, begin to live together. He is going to tell you things that will break your head and your heart for having not done what you should do. If anybody makes any arrangement for you, unlawful arrangement, a pastor, maybe pastor, became so concerned about you and then informs you that the person is good. Friend, that is illicit. It's unlawful. Don't go on. Report that pastor. You report him. If you don't and you continue that thing is going to turn around to undo you. If you don't report the pastor, but you didn't go ahead with that instruction, later on, that thing will come out and you may be brought in. That You knew such a thing and you didn't report and you can get chastised for another man's sin. If pastor calls you and tells you to marry that sister, or tell this to your sister, somebody will be coming. You don't need to pray much. The person is a child of God. I know him. Report him. That pastor is a destroyer. In terms of marriage, the pastor is not to
put you into pressure, under pressure. Today. Marriage is very delicate. That is why we want you to make the decision yourself. Assist you in prayer. Make interpretations for it from the dreams you have said. But allows you to make the decision. If anybody makes it for you, that person has flouted the rule of the church. If you keep quiet, then you are assisting in the destruction of the church. Proverbs chapter 20. Verse 17. I want us to read it together. All the brothers and sisters who are single, we are going to read it together. Read it to your own hearing so that you can hear yourself. Are you there? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 17. Let's read. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Read once again. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with a gravel. A third time, bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be. Let this scripture always stay in your heart. Let this scripture sit in your heart. Let the scripture take hold of you so that you will not entertain, you will not make any room for dishonesty. If you deceive the committee, after deceiving your pastor, you deceive the committee and then you get engaged in the relationship, this scripture must act. Must is not may. It's not just shall. Must act. I have seen. I have heard. All along my career as a pastor from the 1980s or rather 90s when I began to minister on marriage. 90s. I have not talked to single brethren without making reference to this scripture. Marriage is a place where that scripture plays out. If you cheat the committee, if you deceive them, if you dribble them, and you finish, and you succeed, and you score the goal, and you won the match, when you come home, you are going to eat gravels after a time. And the deceit will come out. You cannot cover it. It's not possible to cover it. Women, your nature makes you disadvantaged in marriage. Men know what to say. And your heart will be rent into shreds. The person that you are covering, that you are standing for and by, we use that thing you did against you and we tell you that you seduced him. And even when he tried to check out if you were a genuine Christian, you proved that you are a deceiver. That was why you didn't report. And then your charm has overwhelmed him. Now are you showing the person you really are? Now he, he's beginning to tell God, God, why do you allow me to make this mistake? You are very self will be saying what a stupid person I have been. He can bolt out and say, I will leave the watchman for you and go to marry. Many times after the mistake has been made, the person that should have married you, the person that God was preparing, will now appear. By that time, you have lost out. What would that happen? Somebody will ask. Now, that person, see, the person didn't marry the perfect will of God. What happens to the person? God, in his infinite wisdom, will provide another person 
that will fit him. Don't be in a hurry. Don't allow any person to cheat you, to deceive you. If you join, you are the one that will regret it more. Bread of the seed is sweet. But afterward, the mouth is filled with gravels. Never, never make the mistake of marrying an unbeliever. The unbeliever is the devil's apple. This is, I'm showing you, are apples that the devils give. The apple of an insincere person may be rich. The brother may be rich and then wants to marry somebody that looks very, very beautiful. And the sister does not know that marriage is not all about money. And the sister says, okay, I agree, I agree. This brother will help attend to my family. At least my the poverty will no longer be mentioned in my family again. I think I, I let me agree, no matter what I see in him. By the time he takes you to his house, there will be no peace in your heart. Number one, you have done what God said you shouldn't do. No peace, no love. You, the thing that you are trying to cook up within yourself, you are trying to build up. We just so de be deflated that you are looking for it. And any time that person that was seeing you as beautiful looks at you, it will be a curse he will place on you. It will be a statement of sorrow he will place on you. I can read to you right now in my handset a sister that from some other diocese that wrote to me. They just married in June. June this year. The thing she wrote that she is tired. She wants to go. She wants to go. I have it still now. I got it last week. She wants to go. Every time this man, look at what this man is telling her. Bread of the seat. Afterward, the mouth will be filled with gravel. Marriage is not for the immature boys and girls. Boys and girls want to marry and take photograph, picture, and put a beautiful picture in Facebook. Nowadays, I even see, I went to Facebook to see what is there. And one of the days, I saw, I don't know if that person is a watchman, carrying the wife, carrying her like that. They have wedded. Be very honest. You won't lose anything by being honest. Assuming the brother was being led by God, but was overtaken, that your honesty will attest to your credibility. If your honesty makes him to go back, then God has saved you from a marauder that came to steal away your salvation. If you do the right thing and that person goes back, God has delivered you from an impending death. So you don't lose anything by being honest, being truthful. By the time the person is processed, some tests will be given. If it is found that the brother was just overtaken, he continues. But if he wasn't genuine, we will know with time. It's a matter of time. Some tests will be given to him. And that will prove if he is genuine or not. The devil's apples are deceptive. They don't show. They are not what they show themselves to be. If you eat them, they will turn very bitter in your mouth. Don't allow anything. A sister comes to you and somebody that on your own you will have wanted to and she makes an advancement. Begins to run away from her. Run away from her. She will pull you down and exit. She will pull you down 
and exit. Leave the church. I know some people want to ask questions now. What will happen to that person now? You are being warned so that you will need to ask that question later. Escape while you have life. So that you don't begin to ask. What about the scripture? If the unbelieving depart, let him depart. You are being warned so that there be no unbelieving in your life. So that there be no unbelieving coming across your way. Somebody wrote that to the GS. GS threw the question back to her. You, you answer it yourself. I'm not going to answer it. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Reading from verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion had light with darkness? And what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believed with an infidel? And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Marriage is a yoke. We're going to see it shortly. Don't go to get tied with an unbeliever. The tying with an unbeliever was described as an unequal. Yoke should be done to animals of the same size. If you get an ox and then you get a dog and you tie them together with a yoke put a bar on the neck of the ox, tie that bar to the body of that, to the neck of that ox, and then get a dog, tie the other side of the other side of the bar to the dog. So that two of them will be at shoulder, uh, they will be together to do any work. That work will not be as good as if you have left that ox alone or if you have left that dog alone. The dog will be a nuisance to that ox as well as the ox being a nuisance to that dog. It is an unequal yoke. If you want to enjoy the cumulative output of the two animals, of two animals, the two animals should be equal. They call it synergy. They should be equal. If you put one that is smaller, much smaller, it will rather be a nuisance to the bigger one. In marriage, two people of the same kingdom are expected to be united. If you bring somebody of the kingdom of heaven to unite with somebody of the kingdom of this world or of darkness, the yoke will be a nuisance. And most of, of the time, the person from the kingdom of light will suffer it most. Those of you that will always rush back to the east. East. Ebony. Abia. You must return to your village. That is where the will of God must be for you. Abia, Ohafia, and all those areas. You must go back to your village. That is where. And you may even collect one of the people there and come back and inform us that you have seen somebody. And tell the person to begin to go to church. You will tell her to begin to go to Watchman Church so that you can marry her. Because your people want you to marry from your kings, from your, from your town. When you finish, the time of chewing the gravel will come.
the apples that the devils give are very deceptive. When you finish eating, you will find that you didn't bargain for the new condition you find yourself. I'm going to give you some little time to think. To ten minutes. And then I come with the other message. As you are thinking, you are telling the Lord, Lord, I will not accept any apple from the devil. The devil's apple could come from parents and they'll tell you, we have made arrangement for a partner for you. We have made arrangement for who you are to marry. And that person may be a person who has wealth, who has beauty, who has this and that, that you may like or as a human being. But that is not the will of God. Please, 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 the apple of the devil must not be tested. Test it, you regret. If you focus on the apple of the devil, you are going to eat it. As Satan pointed that fruit to Eve to consider, to make her wise, a thing that will make her know the knowledge that have knowledge that is for God's only. As she beheld the fruit, the fruit seemingly began to speak to her. Look very nice, very tasty. Began to speak as it were to her senses that once you eat me now, you are wisdom is going to escalate. And then she was drawn to eat after eating. And the husband finished his own. They found out that they have really known what God's 